morning, Artillians. Welcome, welcome back to my channel. So this week there is something that I need to talk about and then we are going to get into the video. So unfortunately, Calypso has passed and I have absolutely zero idea what happened. Shortly after I posted the Meet My Tarantula video, she went into molting. Like she acted like she was going to molt. She went upside down. She was doing her twitching thing, but nothing ever broke. She never even started actually molting. She just kind of passed that way and I'm not sure what happened. And a lot of Googling says that it's humidity problems, but she was in a bioactive tank where she was getting sprayed down daily and the humidity was good. My plants were doing fantastic. She had a water dish in her tank, as you guys know. So I'm not sure what happened. I didn't want to post about this last week because I didn't want to start off the new year with sad news. So unfortunately she has passed. It absolutely breaks my heart that I don't know what happened and that is making me very sad. As I always say to you guys, I am not good with emotions. So that is that when Calypso did pass and I was sure that she was gone, I took her body out and I inspected it and everything and there were no injuries. There was no spider blood. There was no burst abdomen and nothing like that. Everything seemed fine. So I have absolutely no idea whatsoever what happened or what could have happened. So we really, really feel like it was just a fluke. So we are wanting to try again in the future. So today we are actually going to be building a bioactive setup for a tarantula and I'm going to attempt to fix anything that possibly could have been a problem in this tank. So we are starting all over. We're doing a new tank. We're doing new substrate. We're doing new drainage layer. Literally everything because I want to make sure that if somehow that was my fault, if I did something wrong, I want to make sure that everything is fixed and everything is different. So we are going to do that. This is clearly in no way, shape, or form a how to set up a tarantula habitat video. If you keep tarantulas and you have any advice or tips or anything for me, please leave those down below or send me a message on Instagram or Twitter or something. And yeah, because I have no idea. But I will say that while I am very, very, very sad and disappointed and heartbroken over this whole thing, I do want this to be a happy video, not a sad video. So that is why we are building this new thing. So again, let's just have this be a happy video and let's go on to building that tank. So yeah, this is a bioactive setup for a tarantula maybe and yeah. So this is the tank we are starting with. It is a five gallon that came from a yard sale. We are starting with a five gallon that is long and not tall because I don't want to start with an adult. So we're gonna not give it that much of height this time and more focus on just the tank itself. So this is a five gallon that came from a yard sale. The top is very rusty. So we are going to completely redo that lid and I have already cleaned out the tank itself. And we are gonna get started. We are using hydro balls this time as opposed to gravel. The same thought process that I I had around my Pac-Man frog where I know that hydro balls are going to be safe so I want to use something that I know 100% for sure is going to be safe so I'm just adding those already rinsed hydro balls and then we're going to work on the mesh screen I'm using two layers of mesh screen I always like to use two when I'm using this kind of drainage barrier because the holes are a little thicker so I like to make sure that nothing no substrate is going to get down into that drainage layer and I like to use this one because it is so easy to find. This is just a mesh window screen. You can get it from Walmart in like the paint section and it's super cheap. I think it was like four or five dollars for this whole roll and this roll has lasted me many tanks. So this is just my preferred way to go but you can buy actual like branded drainage layer or you can use weed block anything like that. This is just cheaper and easier for me. Next up is the substrate. We're going to be using a mixture of this creature soil because my local store didn't have any Refty soil left. It looks like it's the exact same thing. We're going to be using plantation soil and we are also going to be using sphagnum moss and repti bark. I already have the repti bark and sphagnum moss in a separate container mixed together and then we're just going to add this creature soil and the already expanded plantation soil to make a substrate. Again, I don't think that it was my natural potting soil that caused any issues because it is used in all of my tanks in my crested gecko, garo gecko, crocodile skink, even 
open as a dig spot for my leopard gecko and all of them are perfectly fine but I don't want to take any chances at all so we are going to change this too. And then we just add all this on top of that drainage barrier. I like to do it in handfuls at first so that way I can kind of tuck it around those edges or else sometimes the substrate will get between the glass and that barrier so by tucking it it keeps that from happening and then you can just dump it on top. I'm not doing too thick of a layer here because I do want there to be a little bit of climbing room but I also want it to be thick enough to where I can bury some plants so there's kind of a slope where it's thicker in the back than it is in the front and then I'll add more when I add the plants. And now for the most fun part of this, in my opinion, the lid. So this lid again came on that super cheap tank and it is very rusty as you can see. So my plan for this is to completely change this lid. I want to get rid of the rust and kind of seal it and all that, but I also want to take this whole screen off and I'm going to be replacing it with plexiglass. So if there were any kind of humidity issues, this is going to fix that. There's obviously going to be breathing holes in the plexiglass. This was my favorite part of this whole tank. The most frustrating part, but my favorite. But basically what's happening here is I'm just taking some needle nose pliers and this thing is so rusty and decrepit that it literally is just pulling right out of the two pieces of metal that were holding it in place. I did end up getting some gloves because I didn't want to get stabbed by rusty metal for legal purposes. Please don't try this at home. This is definitely how you get tetanus. And after working at that for a little bit, I was able to pull all of that out. And then begins the process of getting that rust off. So I used WD-40 for this because I think people use this to clean like cast iron skillets because you're able to clean it off afterwards and it is for rust. So we, so I'm just spraying a whole bunch of WD-40 on there and then I have a wire brush that I just use to start scraping away at that rust. And this did take some effort and lots of scrubbing but I was able to get a good majority of that off and I also made sure to scrape away any loose paint that was coming off with the rust as well. Obviously this whole process would have been a lot easier if number one you just bought a lid but I wanted to do something fun and different and number two it would also have been a lot easier if the lid wasn't rusty but it's one that I had got from a yard sale with the tank so I figured why not use it. And then I'm just using some Dawn dish soap to get all that WD-40 off. This is a dish soap that is made to cut through grease, so that is what we need here. And I'm just going to be scrubbing that. If you did notice, the frame of this did come loose on one section, but that doesn't really matter because we're going to be putting silicone in this in a little bit. So now we are just focusing on getting all of that WD-40 off. And as you can kind of see here, not the best because my exposure was terrible, but that silver is coming back and that just dark rust color is gone. Once that has dried, it is time to use a primer for this. I am using this multi-purpose Zero VOC primer because it doesn't put off chemical gases that will go over this. As you can see, I got all of the loose rust off. It is still discolored because it was rusted metal, but there's no more loose rust. And this actually isn't in terrible shape. There's no like pits or anything in the metal. It's still solid metal, just super rusty. Hopefully after this lid is done, it will last a little while. I mean, it was rusted metal, so it's not gonna last forever, but that's okay because this lid was kind of a test run just to see if this would work out, which I guess you could say that about the whole tank, it being a test run but anyway this primer was very weird it was almost like watery I guess like watered down milk applying it but it dried okay and it seemed to seal everything up when it dried it was just really weird to apply and because it was so weird and wet I definitely didn't get an even smooth finish on this lid Next up, we're going back to the inside of the house to start working on that plexiglass lid insert. So I learned the hard way with Zaz's tank to not take that protective film off before the entire thing is done. So we are leaving that on. I am using this Sharpie to draw the lines where the air holes are going to go just to make sure everything is lined up. And I'm also going to be cutting a door into this. Now, the reasoning for that is because, yes, I know the whole lid lifts, but I want to be able to just put 
bugs or whatever into the tank without having to take the whole lid off. And plus, when I go out of town, my mom is the one that watches the animals and she is afraid of spiders. So I want to make sure that she has a way that she doesn't have to take an entire lid off and have a spider sitting right there in front of her to spray the tank down or feed him or whatever. That way she just has a small door that she can do that with. So we're putting a door in this and lots of air holes. And I am starting with cutting out that door because I didn't want to have a bunch of holes and then be pushing to cut the plastic because I was scared it was going to shatter. So to do this, I am using a plastic cutter. It came from either Lowe's or Home Depot and it was pretty cheap, maybe three or four dollars. And it does a wonderful job at cutting that plastic. And then a nightmare happened yet again. Another mistake on my part. I was trying to pop that last piece and I guess I didn't cut the corner very good. So the whole thing shattered. <laughs> I was very frustrated, but we got through it and my husband came in to cut out a second one. So he just did the same thing. He redrew everything out on a different piece of plexiglass and used that plastic cutter to cut along on both sides to try to get it to break. And then he ended up using a handsaw to help him get those last corners so that the whole thing wouldn't snap again. And then he redrew those lines on and just started using a drill bit on a battery drill to drill some breathing ventilation holes in the top of that tank. I did not do this part either because I just knew that I was going to break the whole thing again. And you can't really see any of the holes and it just kind of looks like a giant mess, but once all of the protective paper is off, this is gonna all make a lot more sense. So I somehow lost the footage, but when the primer dried, I ended up using a non-toxic acrylic craft paint to paint over the primer. And then I sealed it all with shellac, which is a sealant that I like to use. And this is a few days after that, once everything is dry, you can see that it is not as smooth as I wanted it to be, but that's okay. This is an aquarium safe silicone that I'm going to be using to attach the plexiglass to this lid. And so we're just going to put this in there and seal it up. I thought that there was more in this tube and I can clearly see from the video that it was almost empty. So it didn't end up looking as good as I wanted it to look, but I did get it sealed in there until I could go to the store and get some more. And this is another one of those learning from my mistakes things. I am peeling back only a little bit of the protective plastic so that the silicone can get in there, but not enough that it's going to get silicone all over my plexiglass if I slip. And this part of the silicone is literally just being used as like a glue. We're going to put silicone over the top of this too, or the bottom, the inside. So this is just being used like glue. So I just put a bunch of beads of silicone everywhere just to hold that together. No one's going to see this part, so it doesn't really matter what it looks like. And I guess at some other point that also did not get filmed, I cut out these little rectangular plexiglass pieces and they are also going on the underside of where the door is gonna go. And that's just gonna keep the door, that's just gonna give the door a place to rest so it doesn't just sling right through to the inside of the enclosure. But when I did this, I just kind of glopped on silicone and I didn't pay attention at all to how that was gonna look. So that definitely looks a little sloppy now that the whole lid is done. So so if you are going to attempt this, just keep that in mind. And then I went to the store and got new silicone and I'm just peeling back all of the edges of that protective film again. And I'm actually just taping it down because it was kind of windy this day and I just knew that I was gonna get all the silicone in place and then the wind was gonna flap these things right back into the silicone and I wasn't gonna be able to get it up. So I'm just putting a piece of tape over everything so that it just holds everything in place. And I just noticed that you can see the reflection of the clouds on the plexiglass and that's kind of cool but anyways and then I'm putting a very large line of silicone all the way around the inside that is just going to number one make sure that this plexiglass isn't going anywhere and it's also going to make sure that the humidity is going to stay into this tank and you can also see that I put another lip of plexiglass in the front of this tank again just to make sure that that door is going to be pretty sturdy sitting on top of those lips Next up is the door. This is just the piece that I cut from the other plexiglass. I did sand it down some to make it smaller than the actual opening was. And I cut a whole bunch of holes on the top of this too, just to add extra ventilation. I am adding a handle to this. I don't know what this handle is. It was a piece of plastic that I found in my junk drawer and I painted it black and it looked like it would make a good handle. So that's what I used. I am just siliconing that to the top. 
and then we're gonna add these hinges these are more just very cheap hinges that I got from either Home Depot or Lowe's they were probably two dollars max and I'm just siliconing those to the top as well later on I found out that the silicone did not hold as well for these hinges as it did for everything else and I ended up having to go back and use a special kind of rapid dry super glue and that ended up working better so if you are getting any kind of points from this section silicone did not work very well so next up is to actually start putting things in here so first we're going to put in this pothos i think this is a marbled pothos is what it's called it came from again lowe's or home depot and i replanted it into a pot with just normal organic potting soil the kind that i use for my tanks and i cleaned the leaves really good i cleaned out the pot before i replanted it and i made sure that it was all okay and then after letting it sit for a little over a week in that isolation I felt comfortable enough to put it into this tank and then I also have this Dracaena plant that I'm gonna put in there as well I wasn't gonna put another one but this just looked super super empty so I'm just gonna add this one more and again this went through that same process of sitting by itself in repotted soil for a week before I put it in here and I'm just adding some substrate around that to make sure that it is held into place and sticking this one at the front and then we are going to add in some spring tails and this is one of the three cultures of springtails that I always use. I've had a couple people ask me about this. For springtails, you can buy one culture and just put it in a bigger container. Fill it almost full of charcoal and fill it halfway full of water and you can just sprinkle a couple of pieces of rice on top. And in very short amount of time, those springtails will repopulate like crazy and then you can separate those into more containers and each one of those will repopulate. So you could have a endless supply of springtails from just buying a single springtail culture. I just wanna talk about that because I get that question a lot. I'm just pouring off some of this water into the tank to get those springtails in there. And this of course is my cleanup crew for this tank. It will serve to clean up any waste that is produced. It will break down dead leaves and turn it into fertilizer basically for the plants and it just keeps the whole ecosystem moving. Next up is leaf litter. So this is leaf litter that I had left over from a while ago from Josh's frogs and it actually ended up being enough. We are putting a pretty large amount over the springtails and this is going to give those springtails a place to hide and it is also going to break down and give those springtails something to continue to break down to turn into nutrients for the plants. I want to put isopods in this tank and I'm not sure how that that works with tarantulas so if you know how tarantulas will deal with isopods in their tank please let me know down below because I'm just worried that they're gonna eat them all so please let me know in a comment or a message if you know how that works out and then I'm just adding this skull I have had this thing for forever and had absolutely no use for it and I thought it would be really cool in a tarantula tank so I am sticking that in there as well and back to the lid again the black rim isn't as smooth as i wanted it to be but that is okay i'll just have to find a different primer for next time but i'm just peeling off all of this protective layer so that we can expose the pretty plexiglass underneath and this is it so far you can kind of see where i was talking about on the sides where the silicone that i put in for that rim really irritated me because it looks super sloppy and i just didn't think about that but i am overall pretty happy with how this turned out and then i realized that i needed some sort of locking mechanism on this lid or else the animal could just pop his way out and we definitely don't want that so since this was another poor planning thing on my part i scoured the house to try to find some sort of way to be able to close this lid and keep it closed finally i actually just ended up taking the metal closure things off of an old picture frame and just using a form of glue this is that rapid dry glue that I ended up having to reuse on those hinges and that held them in place and it seems pretty solid. And I know this is a very long video, but that is it, the end. Again, if you are an expert in the field of tarantulas, specifically pink toes, arboreal, humid tarantulas, let me know any advice that you have for me in the comments or send me a message. 
And that's it guys. This setup was clearly a lot more minimal than the last one, but I still like how it came out. I think it looks super cute, but any suggestions at all, please leave them for me down below. And as always guys, please feel free to follow me on my other socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put out a new video, which is every Sunday. Huge thank yous and shout outs to I am Dave Thompson for following me on Instagram and going through and liking it, hold my stuff. Thank you so much, Dave. You are the bees knees. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.